Matthew chapter 5 and verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Welcome back to the School of Obedience. I'm Don Pullen. Peacemakers are called the children of God. Let's talk about it. We've been going through Christ's teachings on the Sermon on the Mount. And what Christ is teaching on the Sermon on the Mount, or he's describing actually, is the characteristics of a Christian who is seeking the life of a disciple. You have to remember, when you come to Christianity, when you choose to heed to the call of Christ, when you choose to be obedient to the command to come unto Christ for salvation, when you choose that life, you have to remember from that point going forward, obedience is not an option. We cannot be running around calling ourselves Christ-like and living the way we want to live, doing whatever we want to do. There is a standard of living, and the base of it is given in the Sermon on the Mount. Now, we've gone through the first few, and the plan is to continue and go through the entire Sermon on the Mount. If you haven't seen the other teachings, please go ahead and have a look at those. I'll link them in the cards up above. Okay, but Jesus is describing the characteristic of a disciple, a disciple of Jesus Christ. This is the way you've got to be. When Jesus says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the Son of God, Jesus is not telling us how to become sons of God. Rather, he's telling you that if you are a peacemaker, you will be called a son of God. You'll be identified as a child of God because you do not become a son of God by being a peacemaker. You become a son of God by believing in Jesus Christ, by believing that he came to this earth, died for our sins, rose again, ascended to heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, by believing in the word, by receiving the Holy Spirit that adopts you into the kingdom of God. So this does not mean that if you are a peacemaker, you then become a son of God. It means you are a peacemaker because you are a child of God. You will be identified as a child of God if you are a peacemaker. When we look at the dictionary definition of a peacemaker, it's simply a person who brings about peace, especially by reconciling adversaries. That's base meaning. When we're looking from a biblical perspective, it's a twofold function of a peacemaker. First, to bring peace between God and man as a witness through the preaching of a word and as an intercessor before God on behalf of man. You have to remember that mankind, because of our nature, Because of the nature that is in us, we are destined for God's wrath. You may not like it, you may not accept it, but it's true. Christ then was sent to intervene as an intercessor, to intervene on behalf of man to God by the shedding of his blood, by putting his pure and righteous and perfect life before God as a sacrifice to appease the wrath of God, so that when God looks at you, he no longer sees your sin, because God has no fellowship with sin. He now sees the sacrifice of Christ. He now sees Christ in you. But even though sin in us makes God angry, the Bible says he's angry at the wicked all day long. Even though your sin makes God angry, Yes, he gets angry, but he loves you. And out of that love, he came and he gave a offering unto himself. And people have many questions. Why did God have to do that? And all? we don't know. He's God. He can do what he wants to do. But now when you are a peacemaker with Christ in you, representing Christ, representing the word of Christ, You bring the gospel to men. And then when men accept and receive that gospel, 
you then take those men to God in prayer and you intercede on their behalf. Therefore, you are a peacemaker. It is one of the most important duties as a child of God to bring the gospel to people and bring people to God. A preacher to the world, an intercessor to the Father. And the second part of being a peacemaker is to carry the words of Christ to each man on this earth, bringing peace among men. Let me tell you something. If this world would live according to the words of Christ, there will be no division in families. There will be no hatred in societies, segregation and separation and racism. There will be no classism in churches. There will be no, my church is better than yours. My church is bigger than yours. There'll be no lies preached over the pulpit that cause a separation among people. There will be no division because the words of Christ are pure and they are true. That is the twofold function of a peacemaker. Now, it needs to be clear to you that peacemakers are not people who want peace or long after peace in the world. They are not governments that pass laws on peace. They are not legislators who write policies on peacekeeping. Peacemakers are those whom the Lord God uses to bring reconciliation to a fallen world. As Christians, we have peace with God through faith. And because we have peace with God through faith and we believe in God, we have been made ministers of reconciliation so that fallen sinners can be reconciled back to God and gain true peace in their heart. God in His grace reconciles those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to Himself. And through Christ, we have been given this important ministry of reconciliation so that the world may know that God is the Lord and Savior of all mankind. Christ came to earth to reveal God's goodness and grace, and His death on the cross opened the way for fallen man to find peace with God, to be reconciled back to God through faith in His Son. So when you are a peacemaker, you are somebody that is reconciling man back to God. Remember, Man in our nature turned away from God. And still man turns away from God. So it is on us as those who have faith in Jesus Christ, those who have faith in what Christ did on the cross, those who have faith that Christ has brought salvation to the world by his death on the cross and shedding of his atoning blood for the salvation and the redemption of mankind. It is our faith in that that we then carry that gospel to people in order to reconcile man back to God. And when people hear that gospel and receive that gospel and in faith accept it, they are reconciled to God and also become ambassadors for the gospel that brings peace to the hearts of men. A lot of people are weary and wondering troubled and struggling within themselves. The inner battle, so many people face inner struggles and inner demons, and we need peace. Remember, Christ is the Prince of Peace. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14 to 17, the Bible says, For He is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you, which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. 
hear this, hear me out. Christ made this peace by the blood of his cross. In other words, his death in our place on the cross paid for our sins. It removed the barrier between humanity and God. Everyone who comes to God through Christ and the cross finds they have peace with God. It makes sense then that everyone who commits to making peace between others, especially by their own sacrifice, imitates what Christ has done. Such a person is called a son of God. When you choose to stand in the gap, like I said earlier, to intercede on behalf of man to God for his mercy and bring the gospel to the world for man's salvation, breaking that barrier, you are doing what Christ did. And remember what God said of Christ, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So when you are like Christ, you are the son of God. And you have to remember this, it takes sacrifice to be a peacemaker because you will not always be embraced. You will be rejected. You will be cast away. You will be ostracized. It's sacrifice to be a peacemaker. But it's worth it, not only for you, but for those who hear what you have to say. It's sad that people can go through life and live in this world not knowing they need Christ, not seeking after Christ, having faith in jobs, having faith in money, having faith in relationships. It's sad when people say that I have money so I don't need Christ because we know that there's a war in our hearts and in our minds. There's an uneasiness. There's an uneasiness within each and every man alive on this earth. Peace only comes from Christ. Be a peacemaker and carry the gospel to them. In the book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14, the Bible says, Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. We've also got to create an environment of peace in our societies. I'm not talking about saying, oh, stop the war, stop, yeah, stop the war if you like, you know, but I'm talking about in your immediate circles, because we look at these big events, oh, stop the war, war is bad, which it is, but in our immediate environment, we're not worried about strife and we're not worried about gossip. You know what gossip is? You know what gossip is? Gossip is a spark that starts a flame of bitterness and hatred. That's what it is. So we've got to be the peacemakers and intervene. If somebody comes to you and they say, hey, listen, let me tell you what's going down in Tom's life. Did you hear what he did? Did you hear what he said? You've got to stop it right there. Because you don't want to start that fire and be a part of it, to be fuel to the fire, like dead wood throwing onto a fire because you're spreading. Let it stop where you are. Let it stop with you. Let your answer be, we've all made mistakes. Remember when they came to Jesus and they're like, Jesus, we found this woman in the act of adultery. The Lord demands that she should be stoned. Jesus doesn't say, woman, what were you doing? No, adultery is bad. No. He says, he who is without sin, cast the first stone. And immediately, everybody dispersed. What did he do? He stopped the rot. He stopped the war. He stopped the bitterness. And he presented that day to that woman the love of God through the gospel of peace. And what does he say? Go and sin no more. By the law, she was the enemy of God. But by Christ's love and grace, 
she became a servant of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. Romans chapter 14 and verse 19. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and the things wherewith one may edify another. Seek a life that is peaceful. Stay away from the drama and the trouble. Seek to live peaceably with all men. Let people accuse you of nothing but being peaceful. Don't start fires. Don't start trouble. Make peace in your home. Make peace in your church. But most importantly, make peace between God and man. God bless you. Thank you for watching this. I believe the word of God is always a blessing. Remember, as true disciples of Christ, we learn, we practice, and we teach, because that's the only way to do it. Amen. I'll see you in the next one.